ladies and gentlemen, if you missed this show, I feel bad for you. Backlash 2024 was easily one of the most engaging, entertaining shows in a while. And it's not because of what happened in the ring. It was the entire electricity of the fans going completely off for three hours or so. Just basically on their feet the whole time. Shout out to whoever makes their shoes because that's a glowing endorsement in itself. But anyway, you know, you got the crowd rolling. They were chanting the entire night and it made this show great. Off the top, this is a fantastic, fantastic show that is worth not only your first watch, your second watch, your third watch, your fourth watch, and all of that. But to break it down even more, let's get into it. This is my 2024 Backlash France preview. All right, starting off first, we are getting into Kevin Owens and Randy Orton versus the new bloodline, I guess we're calling it that, with uh, Sol Sokoa and Tama Tonga. Originally, I wouldn't have pegged this match to start the night because I don't know, usually like, opening match she wanted to get the um you know the faces to win but going into this i thought bloodline needed to win more to establish themselves because solo uh solo's like win loss record has been in the mud for the last almost year or so so i thought they needed this more open up the show the crowd was in to kevin owens and randy orton's theme song singing the crap out of voices which is if you don't know randy orton's theme song name and as soon as all four men get into it, they start fighting, even for the bell rings, they start fighting. And, you know, refs and producers and all that come out, break it up. And which, at that point, leads to the general manager, Nick Oz, coming out. It's like, you know what? Street fight. Go. And it turned into a street fight, which it did. They were fighting the crowd, tables, trash cans, all of that. I started out at first, like Kevin Owens and Randy Orton basically taking control and doing what they, what they want. And Solo and Tama get back into it. And it was just, again, you know, tables, chairs, announcer tables, kendo sticks, all that. Just a carnage of a fight. And then towards the end of the match, Kevin hits uh, Tama Tonga with a uh, like a fisherman suplex off the top rope onto some setup chairs in a crazy spot. And it's the one, the two, and the ref gets pulled out of the ring by no other none other than Tonga Loa. If you don't know who that is, it is the brother of Tama Tonga. They were seven time NJPW tag team champions. And you know, another Samoan interferes, sets it. Solo hits the spike with Kevin Owens for the win. And the one, two, three, the bloodline are your winners for the match. I gave this an A. This was probably in hindsight, the right open for the show. It was hot, clearly the crowd Two of the crowd super favorites were Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. You get them to start the show, get it starting hot. It was just action throughout, literally action throughout the whole arena. And with this win, Bloodline are established as people to take into consideration for the future of SmackDown. It's not just, oh, blowing a lot of uh, smoke up in the air. It's, no, these guys can win. They're starting to get their strength in numbers again. So look out, just great stuff all around. Like I said, I gave this an A. All right, moving on to the women's triple threat match for a WD women's title. Bailey, Naomi, Tiffany Stratton. And again, the crowd was just red hot to this. The crowd, which is cool because um, typically for uh, multiple people, like a triple threat fan four way, not everyone gets shy from the crowd. But in this match, every single competitor got a chant. Every, uh, or you no, know, great visual on her interest like naomi did with everybody just going off when she came to the ring but they had the crowd was into this into each competitor and each competitor did get their chance to uh shine there were suicide dives naomi hit a blockbuster which is a like a here's a person here's our person like a flip over neck breaker onto the uh bailey in the barricade there were um near pitfalls uh you know tag team moves including naomi bailey hitting the 1d on tiffany Na tiffany hit her like alabama slams on naomi and bailey on each of the announcer tables naomi went for like a small package which is like a not it wasn't a small package it was like a cradle pin which you go for a pin but you kind of lock up all their uh the opponent's like limbs and stuff but bailey reversed that into her own version of that for the surprise one two three 
and your winner and still WD Women's Champion was Bailey. I gave this match a A. It was so close to an A plus, but there, I think the the beginning was a hair too slow for me. If you're gonna like have a uh, a build, it needs to start. It doesn't need to start hotter, but it needs to kind of get closer to the hot point a little, a little more. If that makes sense. But anyway, I get this A. This was very much the main roster coming out for Tiffany Stratton. She proved that she is ready for a one-on-one -on -one feud, which, again, like I said in my preview, I think that's where they're going. Naomi was great in this. Naomi really stepped up to the plate, and Bailey was, Bailey was just her great Bailey self. All three competitors looked like they belong. Nobody felt, you know, just the third person. Awesome match. Bailey winning was a right call. She still has a w super long run as a champion in her. This shows that Bailey versus Tiffany should be done, if not at Queen of the Ring, which is the next PLE clash of the castle, definitely. Next we have Damian Priest versus Jay Uso for the World Heavyweight Championship. Jay Uso wins uh entrance of the of the year. You know, his his uh his song hits Uso usually comes through comes through the curtain to the stage and it's <laughs> but he started out on this uh in the uh, crowd with like i think it was like eleven thousand, maybe around twelve thousand. i don't remember the exact uh attendance but he was going yay 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 and then the crowd in return if if it wasn't everybody in the audience it was damn near everybody they were like yay yay you know, it's just a whole bunch of people doing that to, yeet. it was awesome it was super awesome um damien came out to like i guess a newer version of his theme which it sounds cool but there is just it's too many words in there way too many words in there so once again it's hashtag fire death rebel this match was a lot different to the other matches uh first two because the first one especially, it was, it was, yeah, there was bad blood, it was a story, but it was mostly just violence and spots. The second match was second, just spots. This one was more so storytelling and slower, which I am a fan of. I'm, I am a fan of title matches playing like to a story, not necessarily, not necessarily relying on spots. It's just that uh, two uh, dudes trying to go out there and fight each other. Um, halfway through the match, though, the Judgment Day reared their ugly heads. Literally for JD, he um, came out distracted Jay, and Damian spears Jay for a two count. Damian then gets pissed that JD's out there and tells him to you know buzz off. Damian and Jay continue to fight, and after a while, Finn Balor comes out and tries to distract Jay. Which leads to their like um, close call, and then Jay hits a spear and a Uso splash on Damian, and it's a one, a two, but JD takes Damian's foot and puts it on the rope for a two count. So Jay said, "Enough of this." He goes, hits a suicide dive on JD, and then runs around around the ring, hits a spear on Finn, and as he's getting back into the ring, Damian grabs him, hits a super self of heaven, which is a a self of heaven as a sit down choke slam and a super one is just off the top rope. Hit staff for a three winner and still world heavyweight champion Damian Priest. Now I gave this one an A minus only because the to me the judgment day stuff it, while it makes sense, I not know it makes sense. It happened a little too early. It kind of like sucked the wind out of it a little bit. So I can't put it on par with the first two matches. Like I said, I like the slower match, I like the uh, build I like just the psychology but the the Judgment Day stuff hurt it a little bit more than it should I brought it down to A- minus. Damian wins he continues this crusade that while he's still in the Judgment Day he doesn't need the Judgment Day to continue his title reign he even like told um, JD and Finn who are attacking Jay after the bell to stop he, he doesn't need it he wants his basically wants his title reign stand on its own. So look for more dissension in the ranks, which the way they are teasing, look for Finn Balor to come out as a, a contender for a title soon. Maybe they run that once or something like that. But either way, Damien retains. 
Jay always has, still looks like a star. I gave his A minus. Next, we have the Kabuki Warriors, which is Asuka and Kerry Sane versus Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair for WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. I know this match is gonna divide some people, and rightfully so. I wasn't super into the match. This was the low point of the night. I'm a fan of Bianca Belair. I'm a fan of presentation of Jade Cargill. I'm a fan of the potential of Jade Cargill. There are times where the inexperience showed. I mean, they, they presented her like a badass. Bianca and Jade fully went into full just throwing people around. Jade hit, hit a uh, springboard crossbody, which is great. Had she came from behind more herself, Jade did, it would have been better. She didn't, I don't know, it's just, even when she was getting her ass kicked, it still did not did not feel like she was getting her ass kicked, if that makes sense. Jade had a, an impressive display of power on Kairi Sane, which is basically like, went, like lift her on, on her shoulders, threw her up, threw her up, threw her up, hit a, uh, her foot move Jade, which is basically just holding him up in the air and just slamming her face in the ground. And then Bianca hits a KOD, which is a, think of what John Cena does and just the reverse for a one, two, three, and your new WD Women's Champions are Bianca and Jade. I get it as a B, only because of the moment and the impressive displays of power. If so, you, you were to tell me you gave this a C, I completely understand. Bianca uh, and Jade, especially Jade, they're gonna still present her like a badass, not have her lose, completely get it. What does damage control go from here? Not sure. After uh, damage control, Becky Lynch, uh, Raw Food, mate, honestly be pretty cool but bianca and jade are tag champs and they're gonna hold it till the end of time there's no one on a roster right now that can take it from them unless they implode within themselves but nonetheless match gets a b let's move on all right we have the main event which was cody rose and aj styles for the wwe championship it was so i like i wish i spoke french i have no idea what they were saying i i probably should have looked up a translation on x or something the crowd was going bonkers the entire match and this was just two guys who who know they're good, who know their technicians just going at each other and uh, attacking each other. And it was just them tr uh, trading haymak haymakers, trading moves, which man could, could find, would finally like just give up and uh, be the loser. Cody hit by an elbow. Cody put AJ through a French nuts table. And it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The crowd was super hot. And I, I know there's discourse on X where like it, the crowd was distracting. They were in it for themselves, but I didn't feel that way. You know, this, they said before this was France's first PLE, you know, you only get one of these probably in your lifetime, you had the most of it. Crowd was, like I said, I thought the crowd was awesome. Towards the end, Cody hit, uh, put AJ into a Kimura lock, which is a submission hold from Brock Lesnar which was a cool callback to Cody's feud with Brock Lesnar at Backlash last year and pretty much throughout the summer. AJ gets out of that, fight, fight, fight. And then eventually Cody hits a crossroads for the one, two, three, and to retain. So you still your WWE champ, Cody Rhodes. I give this an A simply because the crowd was so hot. That would have been very easy to be for the wrestlers in there to be distracted by the crowd and not think they were into it. To, to be fair, I was distracted by the crowd a lot of it, so there are some moves that I missed. <laughs> That's how, like, how hot they were, how much they were chanting. Cody and AJ still told a story about two, both of them being in their primes, and they were both just seeing who could catch e the other one off guard for a second and capitalize. Cody did, he retained. As an overall show, I gave this an A+, plus because this was, again, one of the greatest crowds I've ever seen through a TV. It was insane, and WWE needs to come to Europe more often. It elevated parts of the show that were not the greatest. Like, if you were to watch, especially that women's tag team match, and parts of that World Heavyweight Championship match, if you are watching an American crowd, it would have been dead. If you are watching it on a, like a Raw or SmackDown, it would have been dead. But they were just going crazy and all that. And, and this is not to say those matches were bad. I thought all the matches were either good to excellent. And we have five, like only five matches. It helps. And it took the full three hours, which I was not expecting. I was expecting like a two, two and a half hour show, but kudos to them for uh, using all the time. To me, the match at night was a, I was going back and forth between Kevin and Randy. 
versus a bloodline and a women's triple threat i'm gonna give it slight edge to kevin and rainy versus bloodline simply because it's it was hot throughout the entire thing and it was the crowd was into it from basically entrance to end maybe not so much towards the end because of this uh uh bloodline interference but for 98 percent of that they were into while the women's triple threat was took a slightly longer to get started but it, it's i'm pick i'm nitpicking I'm, I'm splitting hairs at this point both matches were really good but i'm gonna give it to kevin and rainy versus, versus bloodline for match at night mvp i probably sing her praises more than i realize tiffany stratton again proved that she was she's ready she proved that you know it's her division especially if bianca and jade are preoccupied with tag team stuff so the mvp tonight was tiffany stratton all right so that was my backlash reactions let me know in the comments if you disagree with anything i say and let, let me know what you overall thought of the show thumbs up thumbs down thumbs middle i said i gave the show a plus would you give it but for now i will catch you guys in the next video i am at it's heartfelt on all socials but right now i'm just heartfelt all right i'll see you peace